Hi all, let's continue our look at the evolution of chess style and the very important historical match Mikhail Botvinnik against David Bronstein of 1951. Let's go to game seven. So in this game, Mikhail Botvinnik playing white played d4. We have d5, c4, e6, knight f3, c6. And here, after g3, we go into the Dutch defense stonewall bishop g2 by f6 castles bishop e7 b3 and now this plan actually may have indeed originated from Mikhail Botvinnik it's leaving the knight at home to support bishop a3 to exchange off the dark square bishops and then the dark squares will be weaker than they are at the moment that's the idea. Modern methods for black include, uh, you know, trying to prevent that. Sometimes the bishops actually play to d6 for queen e7 to try and help prevent such an exchange. Uh, and there's also other ideas like which have evolved, like um, a5, knight e6 to b4. But here it's possible for white, the way black has played this, to just exchange off here immediately with bishop a3 making use of the knight just on its start square. So we have the bishops exchanged off. So e5 is a little bit weaker than usual. Knight e5, bishop b7, the knight couldn't move because of the knight takes c6. So black protects c6 there. Knight d2, now the knight's challenged. Now we have knight takes d7, knight takes d7, e3. It's pretty closed and a very strategic position here. Rook a c8, rook c1. Black plays c5. And it seems as though not too much is going on. It seems both sides, there's, there's not too, there's not been a single actual pawn exchange yet up, up until this point. But now we have c takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, e takes. Knight f3, again, this e5 square is the kind of weakness in black's position. A knight, because of the pawn moving to f5, it can't be kicked away that easily. We have rook c7, and white actually plays rook c2. It's a kind of symmetrical play for the moment. Knight e4, now knight e5. The advantage white has is white can kick this knight on e4. Knight f6. We have queen d3 putting some pressure on f5. g6. Queen a6. Black has to be careful here. On c takes, there might be queen takes c8 check, picking up two rooks. And then not just that, it's it's pretty bad after. So this pawn is basically pinned after queen a6. We have king g7. Queen returns. Queen d6. a4. Knight e8, queen d2, yes, some protracted maneuvering. Protracted maneuvering stage. Now c takes d4 here. And it looks as though both sides are not doing too much until this point, f4. f4 was played here. So this is uh, an interesting moment of the game. The thing is, white has a small advantage if. I mean, before this very committal move, let's examine queen e7. This position is fairly, if you imagine this sort of maneuvering, it's fairly pleasant for white. White can maneuver around that e file. So I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an advantage here. This is an example variation. There's an advantage here for white. We have now g takes better technically here instead of g takes rook takes takes and then g4 may have been a little bit better white slightly better there okay so in this position knight h5 was played now black also misses misses a major opportunity here in playing knight h5 which is a bit of a shame um Black, well, no, it's it's coming around here. 
rook takes c7 oh pardon me after knight h5 black could have actually done this a little bit better with rook takes c2 in this position so he played uh 32 knight h5 if he had played rook takes c2 first can you see what black can play in this position if i give you five seconds okay knight h5 here it doesn't matter about the rooks of knight takes f4 so this would be a slight improvement uh this scenario black should be fine as uh, so that was like a missed opportunity but here this is different now rook takes c7 check rook takes c7 check and unfortunately white has a pretty strong move now in this position can you see what white can play if i give you five seconds so the iron grip of botman it continues towards the end game here white play what would you play here okay queen g4 Fascinating to really exchange off queens and hit b6 with dangerous knight. The knight's more active, potentially. We have knight f6, parrying queen d7. On queen e7, white can actually play f5 and undouble the pawns. For example, this position is good for white. Okay, so we have knight f6, hits the queen. Queen e6, invasive. Knight h5, but now you know white is forcing that that uh, knight and pawn ending after knight h5. But it's a tricky position here. In any case, what is black doing here? It's it's very difficult. It seems there's a lot of pressure being exerted on black. So we go into this end game now after knight h5. Queen's coming off. Knight takes f4. Now here white has the advantage yeah the knight's just more aggressive at the moment we have knight d3 knight takes b6 white is a pawn up now okay, a pawn up knight b4 king f4 king f6 check knight e5 king e6 king goes to e3 yeah some maneuvering f3 Uh, around this point, Botvinnik himself has some comments. Actually, after the move 4395, he had indicated White's plan is straightforward. Post a knight at d3, uh, and then begin making use of extra pawns on the queen side. This is important, only that in doing so, should not allow the enemy king to approach the f and h pawns. Uh, so... <clears throat> see okay let's see carry on the game g5 king d2 we have knight d3 here knight a6 knight c5 knight b4 yep h3 so the king is not allowed anywhere near the f and h pawns for obviously reasons uh, a wall is put up for the king on this side of the board King e3, knight a6. We have this this moment here is also now critical, where it seems tempting to play knight c5 check, but um, Bovin actually played king d2 here. On knight c5 check, uh, this is actually becomes very tricky for white, this position here. In fact, after h4, there would only be one move to save white to make it a draw. In fact, can you see the only move to hold the balance here? What would you play in this position? Five seconds. B4 would be the only way to hold the balance. So we would have a, a peaceful draw eventually. But uh, yeah, so white's got to be careful about this position, not playing knight c5 check too routinely. Uh, so it just plays king d2. And the king comes here. And we're creating... Mikhail Botman is creating a dangerous pass pawn now. A winning pass pawn potentially. 
s a6 knight b5 knight c6 knight c7 a7 yes that pawn is very costly to black here now here is a final overload of black's position can you see what white plays here which is a total overload now and gains access to these pawns actually there's a way of gaining access to black's pawns if i give you five seconds here what would you play in this position this is a move 65 f4 yeah because uh, after g takes king f3 black is just totally overloaded the knight's trying to hold a a8 the king if it tries to hold f4 because otherwise this king's marching to take this one create another pass pawn but if the king say goes here then we've got yeah knight takes d5 as an example seems pretty clear um so from an evolution of style perspective uh, the Dutch Stonewall here, it, it shows this very, very dangerous plan which has been used by thousands of players since uh, 1951. It's a pretty standard plan of leaving the knight here to exchange off quite quickly the dark square bishops. It works very well. This is like a model game example actually for the whole bishop a3 concept against the Dutch Stonewall. Uh, but uh, there's there's some more modern you know ways of playing the Dutch stone wall with bishop d6 for queen e7 to try and thwart thwart this plan uh, a5 knight a6 to b4 there's other stuff so and actually the stone wall isn't a bankrupt opening even Magnus Colson has been winning with the stone wall around 2016 2015 you know he's been using it with great success so it's it's not a bankrupt opening but uh, sometimes positionally the dark squares can be torturous uh, for black but yeah a slow strategic game and it's and it's also it seems in this match that the longer the games were you know with the germans the helpers of Popovnik could also be very helpful so it seems statistically Popovnik was winning the adjourned games in particular and bronstein was winning the shorter games as a general trend of the match so far i hope you got something for this game and this is all leading up of course to a climax in later years when we see you know Botvinnik ch being challenged by the likes of Mikhail Tal so okay comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much likes appreciated